Hello, you amazing hackers. I hope you're all doing well today. Uh, so I assume since you clicked this video that you want to become a hacker. Well, I want to become a hacker as well. I'm not a really experienced one yet. Uh, I consider myself to be proficient at hacking, but I have a whole lot to learn. Um, today's video is going to be about the basics and how to get your feet wet in hacking. So first of all, we're going to start off with uh, defining a few starting points because of course not everybody's the same and some people have going to be, have a different experience level than others. First of all, we're going to start with people have, who have no experience in the field of information technology. Now that's okay, everybody has to start somewhere. Uh, we're going to guide you through it and we're going to give you a plan for how to get to where you want to be. Now, uh, when you get a little bit of IT experience, that also could be a starting point. Some of you should have some IT experience. And there are going to be some people who have maybe medium to a whole lot of IT experience watching these videos. So um, for me, let's start with people who don't have any experience. It personally took me about seven years of general IT experience to get where uh, a point where I was comfortable to become a hacker and maybe find some exams and certifications to take to validate that I was successfully becoming one. Now for me it was OSCP and I'm going to give you guys uh, an aiming point of OSCP and how to get that. But of course you guys can also get a certified ethical hacker or any other certificate that you would like. Um, but a lot of people would like to get OSCP so I'm going to focus on that as well. Now the first uh, part of your learning experience is going to consist of about one to four years of learning general IT things. So first of all, you should start learning some basic programming concepts, maybe use a basic programming language such as Scratch, Python, uh, Java. Start with some beginner language and get an idea of what you have to do. You have to get some experience with programming because later on in your hacker career, you're going to need to program quite a lot of things and you're going to want to automate your workflow. Um, you should get this programming experience preferably on Linux if you don't have any experience on Linux. If you've been a Linux user all your life, you should probably try Windows because uh, OSCP requires you to know some Windows exploitation as well. And to exploit things, you have to know how they work first. So uh, maybe if you use Linux, start using some Windows. If you use Windows, start using some Linux. And if you start using Linux, actually work with the command line interface. Also on Windows, don't just go clicking around in the GUI because that won't learn you a whole lot. Of course, you can start uh, real slow and start clicking around in the GUI, but also learn how to, lose, how to use your command line interface. Now, what's also very important in hacking is going to be a concept of networking. You don't have to start learning networking right away, but what's really important in this phase is that you start learning about virtualization. There are certain techniques that allow you to run uh, an operating system inside of an operating system. We call that virtualization. It's like running Linux inside of your Windows. So there are programs like VirtualBox, which you can download from the internet and you can install a new Ubuntu installation on. So, um, one of the things I would recommend in your first year to maybe four years is that you get some general programming experience on a Linux virtual private server or on a Linux, uh, on a Linux virtual machine, on your local machine, of course. So um, that should be your first year of experience. Um, when you have some experience, you'll move on to the next phase. You should start automating some more stuff using Bash, maybe PowerShell as well. You'll need PowerShell again on a later stage, so it's best to start using it as soon as possible. Also, networking becomes important at this stage. For example, you could try setting up a web server on your virtual private server. You could try setting up OpenVOS and see what challenges lie ahead. Maybe try installing a firewall. There are many open source firewalls available. You can just install them on a virtual private server or even on an old computer that you have laying around. If you don't have money for that kind of stuff, just buy a Raspberry Pi. It's only like 20, 30 euros. You should invest in your future. Um, you could start using some Nmap, start exploring some things, maybe look up a YouTube video or two, uh, that kind of stuff. You should get comfortable with the networks. You should uh, look up the OZ model. 
you should look up how TCP IP works, how UDP works, all that kind of stuff, the handshakes, um, maybe even start some encryption. Now I've been disconnected, I see, let's log in again. <clears throat> there we go. All right, so when you have the networking down, um, you could also start learning how the software development life cycle works. That's really important because for example, a program that gets released doesn't stay the way it is. It gets re-released, features get added. When those features get added, you can release just a feature or you can release a whole program. And when you release a whole program, there might be vulnerabilities in the whole program as to just a new feature. There might be integration vulnerabilities. All these kind of things are interesting to know because you'll know how to approach your target more carefully. Now, when you know all of these things, uh, you start becoming a more medium to higher level profile, in my honest opinion. Um, then it starts becoming time to learn a little bit more about best practices and maybe about design patterns as well. You know, um, just basic stuff, uh, just Google it. I'll put some resources in the description below as well. Now, you should probably also install Kali Linux on a virtual uh, virtual box or virtual private server or Parrot, it depends on your uh, preference. For me, there isn't really one. Uh, Kali runs great, Parrot runs great. Uh, Parrot runs a bit faster, Kali takes up a bit more space, but it's really both the same for me. So your OSCP prep journey can begin from now on. So this is a fourth and final phase. Um, I'm going to make a separate video about that because this video is a little bit long already, which is going to release tomorrow. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you later. Bye.